Hello everybody and welcome back to my Lord of the Rings retrospective. Today is part 2 of 6 and today we will be looking at The Two Towers, the second movie in the Lord of the Rings franchise. This is one of my favorite movies of all time and uh, I'm really excited to share with you guys uh, how much I love it. And uh, then there's Return of the King after this and of course then there's The Hobbit which we'll talk about later. In any case, um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Out of all of the films in this trilogy, this is the worst one. Not saying that it's bad, it's one of the best ones entirely, but the thing is, this film is definitely not the same, and it's a lot different in whimsy and such. But you can tell that there was a swift change in tone. For one, this film is a lot more grey, I guess. The coloring just takes a leap off of Gondor's tower. This doesn't really change in Return of the King, but it works there as opposed to the rest of the two towers, specifically in Osgiliath. Another problem is the pacing in this film. We have one of the greatest battles in cinematic history, and then we have Merry and Pippin talking to trees while on LSD. This film really suffers in the extended edition, something that I would only say for this one. However, with how I may attack this film, it is iconic. This movie is phenomenal, and it is, and it has probably the greatest action set piece of all time. The Battle of Helm's Deep is one of the most creative and interesting battles of any fantasy film. Helm's Deep is important this way because it understands how humans work and how they end up winning the battle. Uh, they earn it. Throughout the harsh battle, we have moments of levity, and in, in a future video, I would like to talk about how Marvel doesn't understand the levity of Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings began the idea of harsh and deadly battles having moments of humor. However, that has become twisted in recent years, with things such as big CGI action set pieces that would be traumatizing for anybody, making big slapstick humor that have a certain level of tonal whiplash. Lord of the Rings understands that it isn't the beaches of Normandy in Saving Private Ryan. Specifically, if the battle was a brutal blood fest with no levity, the cuts back to Merry and Pippin would actually make the movie worse. So Jackson added in levity, counting kills, surfing on a shield, I need you to throw me, they all fit in somewhat to the actual pace of the film. As I mentioned previously, the battle will frequently cut back to Merry and Pippin. These cuts are used as levity, as the jokes are, but they feel less connected. The jokes are fine though, they don't make me laugh as much, but whatever, I'm not too picky about it. And also, the ride of the Rohirrim is genuinely such a cool scene. Like, they've built up so much, fought so hard, and then Gandalf shows up and you're like, HELL YEAH! It's fair to say that the two towers is equally as fantastic as Fellowship, even if for a few shortcomings. This movie has flaws, but I think it was the only way that this movie could have been made. Let me explain. Fellowship is a book that was written very well to be directed into a film. I don't know why, that's just how it works. The book flows pretty well together, all things considered. However, The Two Towers book is very much the second act. Two Towers is written so that in the first half, Boromir dies, and we see what Aragorn and Merry and Pippin are doing. Uh... Then, Helm's Deep happens at the midpoint of the book, not the climax. Then, in the second half, we see Frodo and Gollum stuff, and the book climaxes in the Cave of Shelob. When you adapt that into a movie, you have to have a powerful and visionary climax. However, if there are two clim climaxes, um, Helm's Deep and Frodo getting stabbed, it be creates a tough situation. In this scenario, we know that Helm's Deep has to happen in the two towers, but Frodo, who's not really doing much in the climax, needs to have something to do. So they solve this by Helm's Deep and the Rite of the Rohirrim happening simultaneously with Frodo going to Osgiliath and having a character moment. It goes well that instead of two climaxes, we find something for Frodo and Sam to do, and that thing has to be really powerful and really good. Frodo's beginning to slip due to the power of the ring, and Sam has to be there to balance it out. I really like the relationship with Frodo and Gollum as well, and how Frodo up until this point is like, let's kill that bitch, up until he looks Gollum in the eyes and sees what the ring does. What zero pussy does to a motherfucker.
you seriously feel bad for Gollum, and his story arc really works uh, for, for, for the film, and the subtle realization that doing the right thing will only ever cause him harm is pretty heartbreaking. But my favorite part of this film by far is Gandalf. Well, technically it's Helm's Deep, but Gandalf's a part of that. Uh, this movie stands out as the one of the most engaging and impressive adaptations of Tolkien's legendary work. One of the most impressive aspects of Two Towers is the visual effects. The breathtaking landscapes of Middle-earth, such as like the towering mountains, vast fields, and deep forests, are incredibly realistic and immersive. The battle scenes, especially the climactic Battle of Helm's Deep, is masterfully choreographed and executed, creating an intense, an unforgettable cinematic experience. The performances of the cast are exceptional, with each character being brought to life in a unique and unforgettable way. Ian, McKellen per Ian McKellen's portrayal of Gandalf is, as I said, one of the highlights of the film, as he conveys the character's wisdom and power with an effortless grace. The dynamic between the hobbits Frodo and Sam is also a standout, with Elijah Wood and John Aston delivering performances that are both touching and powerful. The storyline of the two towers is both compelling and also intricate. It builds up on the events of the first film while introducing new characters and plot twists that keep the audience engaged and on the edge of their seat. Um, the themes of friendship, sacrifice, and power of good versus evil um, are explored with uh, a depth and richness that is rare in modern cinema, uh, and I but instead keeps the momentum and tension building throughout the entire runtime. Finally, The Two Towers is a testament to the power of token source material. Jackson and his team took great care in adapting the books to the screen, honoring the story's themes, characters, and settings, while still creating a visually stunning and emotionally impactful film. Two Towers is a cinematic masterpiece that is both entertaining and thought-provoking. I should interrupt myself here because I keep saying that it's a cinematic masterpiece, but in reality, it still does have flaws. Um, but it is one of the films that deserves to be remembered as one of the greatest movies of all time. And you know what? Fuck it! We're talking about Helm's Deep again! The Battle of Helm's Deep is one of the most iconic and thrilling scenes in Lord of the Rings, and it is a testament to the film's masterful storytelling and visual effects. From the moment the Urukai army begins its assault on the fortresses of Helm's Deep, the tension and excitement never let up. The VFX used to create the army's explosions and the fight choreography are all top-notch, creating a realistic and thrilling experience that puts the audience right in the middle of the battle. One of the most impressive aspects of the battle is the way that it captures the chaos and confusion of real warfare. There are moments where the audience cannot tell who is winning, with the defenders of Helm's Deep pushed to their limits and the enemy forces appearing to be unstoppable. This adds to the sense of danger and urgency, keeping the audience invested and engaged throughout the battle. The Battle of Helm's Deep is also notable for the way that it showcases courage and determination of the defenders. Characters like Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli all have their moments to shine, taking on multiple enemies and fighting against impossible odds. This film doesn't shy away from the brutality of the battle either, before, with many of the characters getting wounded or killed in the fighting. Despite the intensity and violence of the bat battle, there are also many moments of hope and inspiration. When the arrival of Gandalf and the Rohirrim ar army turns the tide of the battle, it's triumphant, and it inspires the characters and the audience. The film's themes of friendship, loyalty, and, yes, the powers of good and evil um, are all brought to the forefront during the Battle of Helm's Deep, making it a pivotal moment in the film's narrative. Overall, Helm's Deep is a masterclass in action filmmaking. With its stunning effects, intense choreography, and powerful moments, it is a scene that is both thrilling and resonant. It is a highlight of Two Towers and stands as one of, if not the greatest battle scene in cinematic history. Overall, it's still one of the greatest movies of all time, and I love it. Again, it does have flaws, and, uh, and those flaws can be spotted all over. But in any case, this movie is just so good. 
Uh, some say that this is the best Lord of the Rings movie, and I don't fully agree, but I sympathize with the thought. In any case, 9 out of 10. Let's finish this trilogy up. Legend tells of a ring created by an ancient evil that gave its wearer the power to enslave the world. Sauron needs only this ring to cover all the lands in a second darkness. But Sauron was destroyed. No. Sauron has returned. <laughs> Middle Earth stands upon the brink of destruction. You will unite or you will fall. Anyway, you need people of intelligence on this sort of mission. Quest. Thing. Well, that rules you out, Pip.